It is NFL Draft Day, and of course, there's a lot of promise around this time of year. Yeah, but you fast forward to February at the end of the season, and there have been all kinds of catastrophic injuries. Among the worst of them, the ones with the hidden but lasting consequences are the concussions. So every player on the field is wearing a helmet. Why is there a problem? Why aren't they all protected? What do we need to change about helmets to make them better? Football helmet designers aiming to reduce concussions in the sport have come and gone. But most of those designers didn't have the support of former NFL stars. And he explained it to me, and I was like, you got to be kidding. I never thought we'd get there. And most of those designers didn't have the determination of this guy. I wouldn't do this with a regular helmet. This helmet is soft on the outside, absorbing energy where the padding really does good. Bert Strauss is 81 years old. He spent 20 years working on a helmet design, and he figures he's finally got it down pat. It's called the ARC, Anti-Rotational Kinematics. It's divided into segments. The impacted segment moves with the impact, absorbing the rotational energy. We need to advance equipment and technology. My ultimate goal is to reduce as many concussions as possible. Today, Bert's new prototype is going to take several blows head on to see if it can tackle the heat of a football hit. It all began for Bert back in the late 80s. I was a couch potato watching a football game and a couple players came to a helmet to helmet hit and they both went down. And I looked at that and I just kind of thought, whoa, if you put a giant pillow in between those two heads, uh, that wouldn't have happened. That kind of whimsical notion kind of stuck with me. At the same time, Merrill Hodge was a star running back in the NFL who had suffered a number of concussions. When my concussion happened, I really don't remember any of it. I can't even tell you other than I remember I felt like I was in an earthquake. I just couldn't stand up. I started asking questions. My first one was like, how could that happen? And I have a helmet on. My thought was, we can do better and nobody should ever experience what I'm experiencing. It started with this accessory we called the Pro Cap. It Velcroed onto the helmet. And as you can see, it's kind of soft. It gives with the blow. And that's how we absorbed a lot of the linear energy. But soon, his focus needed to change. Scientists and Bert began learning more about concussions. The clinicians are telling us that half of the concussions or more that occur on the football field are the result of rotational accelerations, not necessarily linear acceleration. A direct blow, linear acceleration pushes the skull in the direction of the blow and causes the brain to slam forward or backward into the skull. Rotational acceleration comes from glancing blows at an angle that turns the skull relative to the brain. This causes damage to the fluid between the brain and the skull, and that affects cognitive behavior. A change in design was needed. The arc helmet is built on the technology of having the soft outer surface. To take care of rotational acceleration, we need to have relative movement. And we divided the cover into various segments. Well, the energy that went into moving that segment is energy that's not transferred to the skull. The change of color is telling us the magnitude of stress in the material. A key design development came when Bert hooked up with Johns Hopkins University and their virtual brain injury testing. They had a head form and they were banging the brain around in the virtual world. And that caught my attention because I never had that level of research available to me in the past. Bert started pummeling a virtual head form, wearing a virtual arc helmet with virtual hits. A trial and error process doesn't give us this depth of knowledge. We save a lot of time and get deeper and better results. Those results are impressive a 38% reduction in brain strain. Okay, now we've gone through all the simulations in the virtual environment. We're ready to go into the real world and really bang this thing around. 
The linear impactor will play the role of linebacker today and deliver some big hits testing those rotational accelerations. What I'm hoping to see today is uh, <laughs> points of failure, actually, things that need improvement. You may see some parts fly off or something like that. Accelerometers in linear and angular rate sensors measure the impacts. Those tests went great. We met our rotational goals for that particular impact site. We've got a few more angles to look at and hopefully get the same results or better. And then it's on to the field and one big step closer to putting this on the player's head and giving them the protection that they deserve. When I hear this helmet not only absorbing but deflecting impact, I was like, tell me you're kidding me. Anybody who ever put a helmet on needs to have technology like this because that's where we are today.